man. Yep. Good job. <laughs> Today's podcast is sponsored by Microsoft uh, and their new support and their new podcast, Security Unlocked. It's tough to ramble that out on a Monday morning, but you can find links down below because they don't ramble. They actually talk a lot more cohesive and coherent than Paul and I do. I assume I'm not helping. <laughs> no. <laughs> As well. That's that's pretty much part of the course. Look at this. Yeah. I still oh. Look at this. Wow. Look at that. There we go. Still impressed by the power of cable. Yeah. Okay. Here we are. It's Monday. Brad, it was 28 degrees when I went out for a walk today. It's 30 here. Yeah. It's okay because when I got back from the walk, it was 28 degrees. It didn't even go up a degree. But your dog liked it, though. She did. My dog thrives in this weather. We could barely keep up with her. We have to drag her up the hill at the end of the walk on most days. Today, she's she's like one of those show ponies where the the legs go a little high when they walk. You know, <laughs> just strutting up the street like she owns the place. Sometimes you just kind of like remind the dog that it's Monday. Like, I know. You know. I know. Anyway, I had an you. experience this weekend that I think probably is uh, very reminiscent of many other households in America mm-hmm. or potentially around the world. So, like this weekend, I cleaned out like some of my closet, like. Like, I realized I needed some, like, warmer weather clothes. Like, just, mm-hmm. it'd been a couple years since I bought it. I'm like, all right. So I went to Dick's, bought some, like, stuff, came home, and my wife immediately grabs it and goes, all right, I'm going to wrap this and put this under the tree for you. I'm like, um, <laughs> like, like, no, I, I need these, like, this week. Right. He's like, nope. There you go. <laughs> I was like, okay. And then I go into the, uh, then I go I into the kitchen. And there's a sign that literally says, I even tweeted it out, and says, do not eat these cookies, daddy. Like, then why'd you make them? Like, That's amazing. That is amazing. It's terrible. <laughs> like, just, just attacked in my own house. Well, it could be worse. It could be the Bengals. We're going to go in there today. All I'm saying, Paul, is that if you have a quarterback you like, send them to the Bengals. They have now injured uh, two starting quarterbacks back-to-back weeks. So, I have actually watched l- less, less bat, yeah, less football this year than I think I have my entire adult life. Hmm. Yep. Anyways, let's crap on Apple for a second because I got a problem. Um, so I'm curious if anybody else has this. So I, I don't. Here, here's what's here's here's what's good about Windows, right? My podcast box upstairs is 18 months or two years old or whatever it is. Still, no performance issues, none at all. It runs great. It, it edits video blazingly fast. Mm-hmm. My iPhone, on the other hand, also two years old, with at the time had the world's fastest mobile processor. Now, yeah. since installing iOS 14, there I get this all the time. And I don't know if this is a bug in iOS 14, which plausible but like text entry lags like horribly that's exactly okay my daughter has this exact complaint okay so maybe it's a bug Hopefully. Uh, well she has an older phone than you oh, um well, that's not i think maybe. hers is an iphone <laughs> <It's> not <8 laughs> plus or whatever but um yeah she said the same thing and uh, you know I, I i didn't suggest it to her but i guess for you i would say i mean just reset it and restore from backup and see if that helps i mean yeah, but that's a lot of work. I know, I know, I know, I know. I'm ho- I'm crossing fingers that it's a it's a bug. I mean, that's only like I mean, it's no, like it's, it's legitimately yeah, pretty. She, like you can type, and then all of a sudden, the little letters will all kind of appear, mm-hmm. like that kind of yeah. yeah, yeah I yeah. can get almost an entire sentence like written, mm-hmm. and then before it kind of rips out all at once. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah I was texting my mom this week and or weekend, and I wrote this whole thing out like, where is it? And then just and there you go. Right. So on a semi-related note, um, you will recall that I've been. What I want to do is trade in my 2020 MacBook Air mm-hmm. and oh, get yeah, a new yeah. M1 based Mac. Right. Mm-hmm. I, I'm curious about this thing. Obviously, everyone is. I mean, um, and so every once in a while, I'll randomly check. I'll go to the website, Apple's website, do the trade in thing, and see if I can. You know, I type in the serial number, and uh, to date, it has told me that. My Mac is not. It will say something like, "You can recycle it." <laughs> like it's what? not. It's, well, because the, the zero it comes up and it's like not in the system because um, it's too new, I guess. Mm-hmm. 
but I did it over the weekend or maybe Friday or something. And actually, it, it allowed me to to do it. So Apple will give me six hundred and twenty five dollars or six twenty something like that. What did you pay for it? Um, nine hundred. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's yeah, you know, it's great. So the thing is, you know, I, like to date with Macs. I mean, dating back to I, one iMac I had, like a, one of those um, mm-hmm. the flower iMacs. I mean, basically every Mac I've bought has been a like a laptop, but the, obviously those are more expensive. And I'm like, I never take it anywhere. Like, so I think I'm just going to get a Mac Mini. Yeah. And I think I'm going to get a 16 gig version. Okay. Um, so, but here's the problem. So yeah. if you do a trade, like you know this, like if you go to App, uh, well, mm-hmm. actually I don't know how it works on Apple. No, yes I do. If you do a trade in for an iPhone on Apple, if you do a uh, trade in for a phone at Google from um, you know, Samsung does this. Like, they'll charge you the full amount, and then you send in your phone, and you get a credit back to however you paid for it, right? Mm-hmm. So given that, I would have immediately ordered this m one base Mac, but that's not how they do it with Macs. It's actually a third-party company. Oh, really? So what? I, what they're going to ship me a box. I'm going to ship them the computer. You know, I have to reset it, whatever. And then they're going to issue me an Apple Store card, like a card, like a gift card. So I have to wait. To oh. get this to, you know what I mean? Yeah, because I don't want like you to know, spend a thousand bucks or nine hundred bucks, yeah. whatever it is, and then get like a six hundred and twenty dollar like gift card for Apple. Like I don't want to, you know. So anyway, I'm gonna yeah. do this. I'm doing it. Um, I just, you know, it's gonna have to wait. So speaking of Apple, also, uh, they're supposed to be, according to Bloomberg today, working on. And this is, I mean, this isn't all that surprising. The thing here that's surprising is how many cores. But they're working on a new 32-core ARM-based Mac chip that is supposed to take on the highest end of Intel stuff. Um, yeah. This is going to be – this is the one I think that's going to be interesting. Like, don't get me wrong. The M1 is neat because, first off, it's first out of the gate. Like, we don't – nobody really knew what to expect. Um, mm-hmm. But I think the to me, what's going to be interesting is those edge case scenarios, like the super high-end performance. Like, how is this – yeah, whatever discrete graphics yeah. video editing but, how is that yeah. going to compare to i don't even i don't even know if it's fair to compare to intel right now but like to say an amd threadripper that's like a 32 core style chip i mean yeah i, I look I, I even before we saw the m1 and knew what it was mm-hmm. i think I, I we all understood that there would have to be some solution for the high end and that either means like the more core thing like you're describing or maybe even like multiple chips you know whatever yeah. There has to be some kind of a discrete graphics option or at least, I guess, like embedded graphics that are as good as discrete graphics somehow. Um, something. Because yeah. the machines they've already released with M1s are the low-end entry-level versions, all of them. Great. But there's that other part of the Mac lineup, um, the desktop computers, the the Pro machines, and then the true – and on the laptop side, the true MacBook Pros, like the, you know, the four-port, mm-hmm. you know double graphic system so we'll see i mean i i think they're going to do it I, i'm not this is not something oh no i think this is destined for the slightest you know yeah i mean they're going to do it like i think yeah. it's just destined the 32 core has got to be for the mac pro and it's going to be some mm-hmm. absurd amount of money like you know, yes twenty thousand yes. dollars or something crazy like that but yeah i mean I'll, you know look uh, the new m1 based macs are i mean it's kind of weird to say this with apple but i mean they're affordable mm-hmm. you know for what they are um, I mean, I think they could go even further, but I mean, they're, they're in a pretty good place, uh, price wise. And you don't, I don't know, like you could, you could have said like the Mac, uh, book air that I have mm-hmm. still was pretty, you know, 900 bucks for like a new MacBook, right? Yeah. It's nice. It's not terrible, but it has, it's no, but it has a Y series processor. It's not, um, cooled adequately, right? <laughs> It's installing an application triggers this fan noise that's like a jet engine taking off. As I recall vaguely, I haven't been on a plane in forever, but um, yeah, it's it. You know, th- these are a these are a better experience, you know, as well, at least than the MacBook Air. I think you know this is tangibly related. Um, when you when you said Intel's Y series processor, I was like, man, like their processor lineup is so convoluted, mostly because of what they were unable to do, where they were to take just like. I don't want to say a normal chip, but like their desktop chip and just make one mobile chip. They weren't able to do that because they had to make sacrifices of do you want mobile performance or do you want mobile battery life? And depending on which mobile one you picked. You know, the crap we have to deal with on a PC side is unbelievable. It's like, you know, a Pentium M chip or whatever. No, Pentium Gold chip and a mm-hmm. Surface Go or a, 
a Y series chip and whatever. And I, I mean, I will say the one, the one takeaway I do have from using a Y series chip in a MacBook air over, I guess, two generations, cause I had a 2019 as well is Mac OS is definitely more efficient than windows. You know, oh, it's a little lighter or whatever. Um, because windows really dogs on those kinds of mm-hmm. laptops uh, on the Mac. I mean, you know, just typical day to day running it. It's fine. You know, obviously, but yeah, what a mess. What a, what a world we live in. Yeah. Oh, and the thing that I think is completely reasonable to assume here is that, like, even imagine the M1 was the exact same performance as that Intel Y chip from, like, a raw compute performance mm-hmm. capability. It would still run faster with Mac OS and Windows just because Mac would be completely vertically and effectively yeah, horizontally yeah, integrated yeah. there at that point yep. and optimized. And But you still be running a Mac, too. So, yeah. you know, ugh, I don't know. It doesn't yeah. really do it for me, but... As long as, if I if I could just get iMessage on my PC, that would make me happy. Yeah. That, that's right. re- realistically right. the only thing that draws me towards the Mac, and that's why Google has a uh, a web app for messages. Right, mm-hmm. messages is the Google RCS client, you know, the messaging client, and it's great. It works great. It's it's just literally just text messages, but yeah. you know, it's a it's a PWA. You bring it up, it works in your desktop. It's nice. Um, that's what Apple needs to do is just make a web client. You know, the, the thing is though, like. And I might be completely off basis here, uh, mostly just because we don't see it in the same way we see like Google and Microsoft does. Apple just doesn't really, I don't want to say like a web first company, but they don't feel like they are like dominant in the, I'm going to go build a web app service uh, market, like say Microsoft or Google. I don't know if you've ever done this, but um, you have obviously like a Mac account or whatever, because you Mm -hmm. have an iPhone. So I think think you could just go to like iCloud.com and there's like a grid of icons and you can access documents and your cloud storage and it looks like i mean it's like it's nice because it's apple you know it's apple quality but it looks like something from like 20 years ago it's like Mm -hmm. the simplest it's just there's just not much to it they're just not really they really like to target the device you know which is fine which is i mean it's hard to argue against that when you look at how much money they have and how much money they're making and where they're headed and uh, Mm -hmm. can't really fault them for that but well, yeah, no, I think you can't fault them for it um, <laughs> because the stuff that they do benefits them. Um, right. If they really wanted to benefit their actual customers, they could kind of meet them where they're at. Like not everyone is 100% invested in the Apple ecosystem. It's expensive, you know. Um, the goal is to get them there, of course, but one of the ways you entice them is by making their experience decent where they, they have a good enough experience with like, you know, the next time I buy a computer, I'm going to look at the Mac. Not, I have to buy a Mac if I want to get this stuff on my computer, you know? Mm. It's just, I, I don't know. I'm not saying their profits or revenues would be higher if they did what I would like, but I, I am saying it would be better for people, you know? Maybe. Okay. Actually, I probably would be. I don't know. Um, <laughs> I don't know if there's anything to this or not. I have no idea. Microsoft or Xbox has been teasing like some sort of announcement for, for today on like their Twitter and Instagram, but Oh God, it's going to be some new skin for Minecraft or some stupid thing. Who knows? It's going to be, I can tell you what it's not going to be. Halo infinite. Wow. Yeah. That piece of junk. The best Halo infinite footage we've seen this year was in that dog commercial that oh i don't even think i don't think that was halo infinite that was <laughs> that was like pre-rendered um stuff that they made That's, there's no way that came from that game because like if you go look at that that footage and then go look at like the actual game you're like no no no, no. yeah <laughs> no, I, I, that's like that's, i would play that right yeah and then Spotify, this probably impacts you more than me because I don't use local music, but Spotify is finally adding some, what was that, Groove Music features there uh, with local support yeah, on Android. This is a hard thing to even explain, but you know, one of the nice things about Groove, and Amazon Music used to do this, and Google Play Music used to do this, but now we're pretty much stuck with YouTube Music, which is fine, actually, is that they allow you to, or allowed you to, upload your own music to the cloud, and then you could access it alongside their music. And, you know, I know you're thinking, like, what are you talking about? There's like 40 million songs in Spotify or whatever the number is now. And, yeah, there is. But I have, uh, you know, dozens of songs of my own that are not up there. And then there's all these live things you can get on, like, YouTube or whatever that aren't anywhere. Um, And it's just nice to be able to mix and match if you just need that capability. Um, Spotify has always made that really hard. Um, They offer the ability on desktop to to see your local music. And Mm -hmm. then you can create playlists and you can sync them. 
and then you can sync them to a mobile device, and that downloads those songs to the device. It's the only way that will work. And um, they're adding the ability to see local files now on the device on mobile. It's not there yet, but this is what they're working on. And what that means is, like people like me, if you have a folder full of music that isn't in the service, you can have it on your PC, obviously, access it that way. But most people want it on their phone. So you just copy it to your phone and you cl click on the thing that says see local files. And if you have um, playlists that access that music, you know, that are synced everywhere and that music's there, it, it will work. You know, so it's it's still not all the way, but it's a step in the right direction. Getting there. I guess. I mean, I don't know. I just want I, nothing does everything I want. This is the problem with everything: phones, you know, music mm -hmm. services. In this case, everything. So, like, I really like YouTube Music. One of the things I really like about it is, well, the ability to use my own music, but also, it you can access all the music that's on YouTube, and it, there's incredible stuff there that is nowhere else. But the one thing you can't do that I really rely on, uh, want, and need, is the ability to um, uh, like cast music from the YouTube Music app to Sonos. Like you could do that with Spotify. You probably do. That's probably mm -hmm. how you do it. All the time. Yep. You could do it with Google Play Music. It was great. You cannot do it with um, YouTube Music. So that means I have two interfaces to YouTube Music. There's the one in the spot in the uh, Sonos app, and then there's the actual app, and they're different. And the YouTube Music app is more efficient, and it lets you very easily mix and match songs, add songs in, change the you know the the uh, the playbacks order. Um, you can do that stuff in Sonos. It's just harder and you can't it's you can't sit there and discover music really easily in the sonos app like you can in youtube anyway it's just monday it is monday you know all day fortunately okay. not all week it has kind of been like i think 2020 could be summed up as like a just one giant monday <laughs> we just did our i did my christmas card over the weekend right so mm -hmm. i make this thing actually uh, to date I, I i make it with microsoft paint primarily but I, I've used Spot, or, um, Spotify, yeah. I've used Adobe Photoshop Elements in the past to resize the images so I can put them into Paint. And um, I, I don't use Adobe uh, Photoshop Elements anymore. So I was like, oh God, I, I hope Affinity <laughs> can, you know, because I haven't thought about it for like a year. I don't, you know, yeah. every year I think about it for like one weekend. And then actually, it was it worked great. So good. Yeah, you can you can excite to all the places we visited this year. It was a, a great year of trips, good times. Uh, dining out opportunities. It was nice. It's just actually it's just black. It just it just has a red line through it, and it just says this year sucked. See you next year. I don't know. Well, other things that are nice is that today's <laughs> podcast is sponsored by Security Unlocked, a new podcast from Microsoft. Make sure to check out the links in the description below, or you can right there, or just go to aka.ms/securityunlocked. Yep. <laughs>